So what we're gonna try to do today is to build a decent looking case to put this server in. I want the cheapest stuff I could find at Home Depot. These are actually fence posts, if you guys haven't noticed. This thing came out rough. Like charting a course into the Bermuda Triangle straight through a Cat 5 rough. You gotta admit, we gave birth to quite the eyesore here. Which isn't really surprising, taking my woodworking skills or lack thereof into account. But we did it. We built a desktop case to house the one you server in. I mean, it looks more like a server coffin than a server case, and it's pretty impractical given that it's 35 inches long and 19 inches wide. It would make a lot more sense to come up with a wall mount version of this, which is something I might do in the future. Uh, as I said in the previous video though, this first run was really meant to be a proof of concept. And I think this is a decent proof of concept. With adequate fabrication skills, you could adapt a rack mount server to potentially work as a daily use desktop computer. Form factor wise anyway. We will get to the noise aspect in just a few. Now, as you can see, I made quite a few mistakes along the way. One of the biggest being not waiting long enough for the wood to dry out. The wood was really, really, really damp out of Home Depot. So I let it dry in my garage for a few days. Well, it turns out that was not enough time because after I put the case together, the wood shrunk and warped significantly. Which means that the server will no longer fit in the case with the sound dampening pads installed. Granted, it still is quieter inside the case than it is just standalone outside the case. Um, but it was much quieter with those pads, and by no means is it a bearable sound to listen to while actually working. I found it incredibly frustrating to listen to um, while I was trying to benchmark this thing. I mean, even though it's inside the case, it is still loud, mainly because this is a one-use server, and one-use servers really tend to be on the louder side. So, as I said before in the previous video, a four-use server would definitely be a better fit for a project like this. You've escaped from the monotone, depressing version of me, and now it's on to the more fun part of the video. One of the main data points I want to collect from this prototype were the temperatures with the case open and with the case closed. How much hotter will this thing run while enclosed in a wooden tomb? I accomplished this by using Prime95 in combination with the system information tool. The Prime95 small FFT test was run for 10 minutes, twice with the case left open and twice with the server completely enclosed inside the case. Now I do have some benchmark goodness for you guys, but before we get to that, I just want to thank PC Server and Parts for sending this server over. They have a massive selection of extremely powerful, dirt cheap servers on their website and eBay store. If you use the code AACAT, you can get 10% off anything on their website. I bought my 12 core Xeon editing workstation from them for 290 bucks last year and have had zero issues with it up to now. I absolutely love the thing. 
The links to their website and eBay store can be found down in the description. Now let's get to those benchmarks. So I've benchmarked this system a little already in previous videos, and if you haven't seen the previous videos on this system, long story short, this is an HP ProLiant with 16 gigabytes of RAM, dual Xeon E5606s for a total of eight cores, a NVIDIA GT 1030 and a 10K SAS drive. Previously, I was having issues getting the 10K drive that was included with the system to be recognized by any operating system, and it turned out I did not have the RAID card properly configured. So after I set everything up, the drive was finally recognized and I could run the built-in Ubuntu profiling tool uh, on the drive to get the read rate and access time. The average read rate was 71.8 megabytes per second and the average access time was 7.69 milliseconds. I'm going to let the next three benchmarks speak for themselves just because there's a lot of data there and it's not going to add anything if I'm just sitting here talking over them. So the first thing we're going to run is stress-ng to get some CPU metrics and then we're going to run two unengine benchmarks to get some GPU and general system metrics. Thanks for watching guys, in the future we might have another go at this with a 4U server and a more practical design. My goal for this video was to build a desktop-ish case for a rack mount server and I did just that. Now is it pretty? Not really in the slightest, and it's really too big to be practical as a standalone case. So I definitely will be reevaluating the design of this if I do decide to do something like this again. Now, what are we going to do with the server that we have now and the case that we have now? Well, I'm going to be auctioning that off on eBay to the highest bidder. There's going to be no reserve. And what I'm going to do with that money is I'm going to take that money and I'm going to live stream us donating that money to various open source projects. So Linux distros, um, open source applications, uh, and we will have a voting system for that so you guys can vote on your favorite open source projects and I will donate uh, a percentage of the proceeds from the desktop case um, to said project. So the eBay listing for that will be down in the description if you want to check that out. Now it will be pickup only just because I do not believe the case will survive shipping. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it would just come out absolutely mangled if I uh, shipped this through UPS or USPS or something like that. So pickup only. And that's going to be about it for this video. Thanks for watching guys and I will see you in the next installment of A Computers and Technology.